Hello and welcome along to the On The Whistle podcast. I'm your host, Zayn Nabi. Joining me today is not just Pele wearing yellow. It is the man of immense style, the man of immense character, the man who does it at the national team with the Brave Warriors of Namibia and with Amazulu in the Premier Soccer League, Rion Hanumub. Rion, welcome to the pod. We're so excited to have you join us today. Look at you looking fly. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's an honor to, to be part of this pod, podcast and I'm, and I'm happy to be here. And I think, Rion, you're the first Namibian to join our podcast. So we're so excited about that. Maybe you're going to have such a good time. You're going to convince Colin Benjamin to come back and Peter Shalulile <laughs> to come on rather. Um, but listen, we are a global podcast. And for those listening out there, please don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube at OTW underscore podcast. Um, sorry, OTW underscore. Um, yeah, it is underscore podcast on um on um twitter and instagram also if uh, you're subscribing to us on um our youtube and facebook pages just search for the on the whistle podcast as i say we're a global podcast rion we're so excited to have you join us um for those out there who don't know your backstory rion where are you from and um tell us a little bit about um how you started your journey in football what were your first memories? Um, I go by the name of Rian Hanamup, uh, coming from Otavi, uh, a small town about three or four hours away from the capital city. And um, yeah, I, my first uh, team that I played for was Touch and Go, which is obviously from Otavi. Uh, played uh, from 24, 2013 mm -hmm. up 2014, when I later joined a uh, team from Duke, which is uh, Orlando Pirates. Amazing. And what a name for a team, Touch and Go. Does that describe how you play? It certainly <laughs> does. It certainly <laughs> does. <laughs> and, and, you know, something that I've noticed, um, particularly on your Instagram, Rian, is that um, you really post some um, really inspirational Bible verses um, and quotes Tell me about how important faith is to you. Um, to be to be quite frank, uh, I've I was raised in a, a religious home. My parents mm -hmm. are uh, obviously my um, they are late now, so my late parents are religious people, and uh, they they raised me through 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 religion, and that's how that's how I I I got my faith. And how has that faith helped you through the good and bad times? Um, when we were growing up, our parents used to tell us about Jesus Christ, and you know. But as we we're growing up, we 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 experienced him. So now it's not a thing of we're taught about Jesus Christ. We I personally have experienced him, and um, he's been there through through my good bad times, and um. <clears throat> like his like his word says, um, I have plans, plans to prosper you and not to cause you harm. That's that's the Bible verse that I live by every day. Very inspirational. Well, we'll bring it back to the football on the field, Rian. And obviously the Premier Soccer League season is nearly over in South Africa. How would you sum up the season for for Amazon? There's been a lot of ups and downs. Um Obviously, there there were games that we wanted to win or that we could have won, but we ended up losing or drawing. So, I think there's a bit of mixed emotions. Your coach certainly thinks that a top eight finish might be possible if some results go your way. Do you share his optimism? Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, there are two games left, and we are hoping to to collect maximum points from from both games, which I think, in my opinion, are, are very possible. Looking at the squad that we have and the quality we have, so I think that dream is still within reach. When you look back at the season, because it's obviously time for review, what is it that has led to Amazulu misfiring this season? If you were to maybe pick out one or two points, where do you think? Um, the biggest areas of improvement need to come. Oops, excuse me. Um, I think 
in the goal scoring department because um, our team definitely has been creating goals. It's just a matter of putting them away and we've missed quite a lot of chances that we had to score. And also the most important point is is defensively, you know, uh, we, we, we sometimes tend to, to lose focus and that's when mistakes start creeping in, you understand? So I think mm -hmm. we, if we, we are solid at the back and if we can con convert our chances, then definitely uh, we, we would have finished a bit higher. Your Honour, Mr. Sandile Zungu, who we've had on our podcast, obviously has really big ambitions for the club. Um, I remember when Benny McCarthy um, came to um, Amazulu, the team played in Africa. Um, the team had finished second in the league to obviously a very dominant Sundowns outfit. Since you've been at Amazulu, how many coaches have um, been through the team um, since you've been there? I started under uh, Brendan Trulia. And then halfway through the season, uh, the team brought in Romain Falls. Mm -hmm. And after Romain Falls, it was <clears throat> I ended Lamini who was who was a caretaker. Yeah. And then true. and then the new season I started with uh coach Pablo Franco. Are you looking forward to some stability maybe with, with the coaching? Do you think that could help the team? Yeah, obviously, the longer they coach is in the team obviously us as players we we get to we used to the mm. philosophy and, and the way of doing things so if we are to start the new season with the coach i think obviously you can see the team is gelling together and we are quite getting used to each other and i think if the, the coach stays in the new season i think definitely we, we, we we're gonna get it uh, rolling from the start for those african football fans who consume football from afar the Premier Soccer League really is the benchmark as a league on the continent. It's almost akin to the Premier League in England. Um, yes, you have the North African giants that we know about, al Ahly, Wydad, Casablanca, Esperance. But when you talk about a league, it's generally um, the best run, uh, the most professionalized is in South Africa. I have to ask you, when you look at the champion sundowns, they've been domineering yet again. What is the secret to their success? Is it the coaching of Rolani Mukwena and his other generals? Is it due to the embarrassment of riches the club has from a finance perspective? Is it players, people like Peter Shalulile, who you know well from the Brave Warriors? What is it that underlines their dominance in the Premier Soccer League? I think it's, it's, it's their preparation and also the project that they had started way back you understand some few years ago so i think you should have sort of like a a, a project whereas maybe you set yourself goals and targets that you want to reach because success is is, is not something you can get tomorrow you have to plan it really nicely and prepare well and i think then if you if your preparations are well it sets you up for for, for a good competition what is it going to take to stop Sundowns winning an eighth consecutive league next year? Do you think it's possible for one of the rivals, including yourselves, to step up and and stop them winning uh, an eighth uh, title in succession? I think I think the the most important thing is consistency, which I think is lacking in uh, in uh, this 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 clubs after Sundowns. Because if you can see, Sundowns is, is, is very consistent. And consistency brings uh, success. So if we really want to, 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 to stop uh, Sundowns from, from getting their eighth title, I think we should be consistent in doing the good things, the right things in football. If you were to look at one or two teams in the league next season, who do you think would have the most realistic chance of stopping them? It's okay to say Amazulu. <laughs> Definitely, Amazulu is number one. <laughs> Maybe Pirates as well, because I see Pirates are, are doing quite well. And Stellenbosch as well. Stellenbosch, <laughs> right? what a season. What a season they've had. Does that also maybe inspire you? I mean, let's face it, the, the bigger teams are based in, in Johannesburg, Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs, the Soweto Giants. You have Sundowns, who we've spoken about a little bit for at length this pod. But 
seeing Stellies and how well they've done, obviously based just outside of Cape Town, does that like give you some inspiration that a team that comes from a slightly smaller area with a slightly smaller fan base and not as big a budget can compete and win? Yes, definitely. Uh, I think it's not where you are from that determines your success or determines how well you'll do in the league. Mm-hmm. I think preparation, like I said, if you have a good preparation and if you obviously have have support from 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 the president, I think definitely you're gonna do well. So it's not about about the budget. It's about the preparation and the hunger that you have. Rian, when we look at your season on the whole, and I'm going to get you to just talk a little bit about how you feel it's gone. You've been absolutely outstanding playing at left back for club and country. Your ability to move up and create chances and defend um, is obviously the benchmark in the league. Um, How do you sum up your season? Have you been happy with the way your game has developed? Yeah, um, I think this season has been going well for me. Obviously, if if you can check uh, stats wise, I I have three assists in a league and I have a goal. Whereas mm-hmm. last year, I I ended with two or three assists and no goal. So mm-hmm. I think there's a today. I um, in this season, and also looking at international level, I think I had quite a, a good outcome. Well, your form has certainly got a lot of attention, and I know ahead of the Pirates game this season. There was a lot of speculation about joining uh, the the Soweto Giants. Mr. Zungu, the club president, came out and said <laughs> that would not be happening. You have a contract with the club. Um, I'm not going to ask you if you're joining Orlando Pirates or not, but does it give you confidence in yourself and your ability? And is that validation that you're being linked to a lot of other teams in the PSL? Yeah, obviously... It gives me confidence and it also tells me that I'm doing an amazing job. But also, at the same time, it should not uh, get me arrogant or overconfident. I just need to put my head between my shoulders and continue working hard. And yeah. When you look at the season, what has been the game where you think you've performed the best? And it could be a club or, or country level. Where is the game where you thought, my, this is the game where I've, I've been really happy with my performance and these are the things I did well. I think if we can if I can go to Afghan, I think the game against Mali. Mm-hmm. The game that if we had to win or draw we'd uh, qualify for 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 the knockout stages, which I think I really played my heart out. I think I had a good game and at the end the team had to qualify for for, for the knockout stages. Let's take a, that's a perfect transition, actually, to talk about the AFCON. And when we look at the AFCON, it was incredibly exciting. Um, I look back thinking the Ivory Coast were on, on their way out. <laughs> and then I think one of their players said, well, you can't kill a ghost when they qualified for the knockouts. And they went on to win it. What yeah. was the overall experience of the tournament like before we talk about performance? What, what can you tell us about the Ivory Coast and, and their passion for football? Ooh. If we can start by from from the preparations, mm-hmm. they did. everything was top notch. It was well organized. Talking about the people, people love football. They love soccer, as you could see the turnout they did at the stadiums. They love football, and mm-hmm. I think overall it was a successful effort. Do you have one? funny memory or lasting memory from the tournament, like uh, a story maybe people don't know about from camp or maybe going out for a meal or exploring the city. Do you have an untold anecdote you can tell us about um, the, the AFCON? Um, not that I can think of any right now. I think my business was just to to go to AFCON, do well for myself and for, for my country, which I think we, we did exceptionally well as a collective so it was a pure business trip for Rian I like it I like that mentality I'm going there to do the business I have to say when I watched your first game in the tournament against Tunisia before it I was convinced Tunisia were going to win this is a North African giant this is a team that's been to World Cups and then you guys went out there and performed outstandingly 
to the casual African football fan, that I think was a surprise. Was it a surprise for you having worked with Colin Benjamin and um, having qualified with, with, with the Brave Warriors? Um, I don't think it was a surprise because Coach Colin is a success-driven coach. He likes to win and he's been preparing us well, um, which obviously went well. I think the, the word underdog gave us, what should I say? Because underdogs also have teeth, you understand? And nobody expects them to, but obviously... We had, to test our, <laughs> we had to test ourselves. Obviously, it's, most of us, we are playing in, 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 in the PSA, which, in my opinion, is one of the best leagues in, in Africa. So we had to test ourselves against the world-class players in terms of where we are. What was it that led to the success against Tunisia? When you look at the game plan, what is it that you guys think you got right? I think I have to leave out the tactics and... I think the hunger and the desire that we had and the unity that we had kept us going strong because you could see that we were united and we everyone pulled in the same direction. I think that was the major key. So heart more than head. Is that what you're telling us? <laughs> heart more than head. And I look at Mali and the way Mali started that tournament, they looked like they were going to want to be one of the favorites to win. And when you played them in that final pool game, I think a lot of people would have been thinking that off the back of the South African result. Was it more impressive to get the draw against Mali or was it more impressive getting the win against Tunisia in the opening game? I think I think the win against Tunisia gave us that confidence and that belief that we, we can actually do it. And then, and then come the Mali game, we just had to take out all the positives that we that we had during the Tunisia game and to bring it into the Mali game. When you were going into the Mali game, were you guys thinking, let's get a draw, let's qualify, or were you going for the win? We were definitely going for a win. <laughs> definitely. I <didn't> see that. <laughs> and I remember watching, obviously, the opening game and you guys got the brilliant result against Tunisia. And then South Africa um, lost against Mali. And I don't have to tell you, I'm South African. So we suddenly got very nervous that, you know, what will we call Namibia? The noisy neighbors or the quiet neighbors were, <laughs> were, were going to be <laughs> very confident going into that game. I can tell you, I was going to, I was, I was very nervous. Um, obviously, you guys were flying high at that point, um, but ended up on the wrong end of a 4 0 loss. What happened against South Africa? Where, where do you think the, the, the big issue was? I think I think uh, after the after the penalty, everyone's heads dropped down and they started making mistakes at the back, which I think South Africa capitalized really well. And second half, I think it was a little bit too late to to get something out of the game. When you say heads dropped, I mean uh, like what what did do you remember what Colin told you guys at halftime or um, you know what he was shouting from the touch lines to try to get you motivated. Yeah, definitely. Coach Colin is a very positive coach and a very positive person. He kept he told he told us to keep going and to to understand why we are here, that we deserve it, and that we are we've we've played we've played our best. That's why we are here. So we 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 don't have to drop our heads. And we need to keep going. I have to ask you because there's a lot of familiarity between Namibian and South African players because a lot of the Namibian players play in our South African leagues. Do you think going down and the heads dropped because maybe the players just were too in awe of, of the South Africans? Do you think it was a case of that? No, not per se. Oh, because obviously in the first half we had we had chances also. Mm. But chances we did not convert. So South Africa got one or two chances and they buried it. So I don't think... Yeah, I don't know. So you don't think it was a case of Namibians being intimidated by the South Africans? No, not the case. Not the case. Um, well, listen, you guys qualified for the knockout rounds. Talk to me about Angola. Talk to me about the excitement going into that knockout game. I mean, how were you guys feeling? I mean, because this has got to be mission accomplished, right? Your goals would have been to make the knockouts? 
Yes, uh, our goal was to make the knockout stages, but we had the chance to 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 go to the last eight, which did not play out well. But I think um, Angola prepared really well against us, and they ex executed their plan perfectly. And and also, let's not forget, this is the first time the Brave Warriors have been to the knockout rounds, if I'm correct. Yes, it's it's the first first time first time because. Two previous times we could just end up in the group stages. Mm -hmm. and to, we never even got a, got, got a, a win. But this is this Afcon we won and we we reached the knockout stages, which I think uh, we made history. Absolutely, and I think that's something that certainly shouldn't be lost. The Brave Warriors were amazing. Peter Shalalile is one of my favorite players to watch. He's a star at Sundowns. Uh, we all know his record in Africa. We know that he's also the top goal scorer for, for Namibia. Um, but he didn't score a goal at the AFCON. Why do you think um, he was so blunted at this tournament? Yeah. A very difficult question to answer. Because he was doing everything right. Mm -hmm. Charlie had a bad tournament at all. Yes, he did not score goals, but I think he he had a good tournament, just that the goals were not coming right. Do you think that was because maybe supply wasn't good or was he just unlucky? I think he was just unlucky because he got a few chances, which I think he would have scored. And I think he also lacked a little bit of page, uh, confidence because goals were not coming. Mm. And as a strike for goals, naturally, confidence comes. Of course, of course, of course. Um. There's obviously World Cup in 2026 in North America. Namibia had an outstanding um, AFCON, considering it was the first time that you made the knockout stages. Is the team talking about qualifying for the World Cup? Is that something that you, the players, Colin Benjamin, think could be achievable? Definitely, definitely. Our, our next mission should be qualifying for, for the World Cup. At first, our mission was to qualify for the AFCON, mm -hmm. which we qualified and we did well. So, what's what's stopping us from from qualifying for the World Cup? What do you think would be your greatest strength in qualification? Where where do you see, you know, if if there's an opposition team doing their analysis on the Brave Warriors, what would they see as your greatest assets? Uh. I think Namibia defensively, defensive wise, Namibia is a very, very dominant country, should I say, because uh, it's not mm -hmm. easy to score goals against us, except uh, South Africa, of course, at Afcon, <laughs> which I think one in every blue moon. So I think defensively, Namibia is 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 very structured and mm -hmm. very organized. So yeah. They, they have to really dig deep to to break us down as goals. Because the theory is you're tied at the back four, but when you can hit on the counter, if Shalulila is in form, you know what I mean? You you get the goals and then you go with it. Or... As we sit back, when you get the ball, counter attack, we have Peter Shalulila, we have Dion Hoto, you know, we've, we've got uh, Betuel Modeo, we've got speedy players, and I think that's really a threat. For, for for the opposition. Yeah. And if Namibia was to, to make the World Cup, I mean, that would be something that you think would unite the nation? Yeah, obviously, obviously, definitely it will because Namibia has never qualified for, uh, for, for World, World Cup. Cup. Obviously, if we do, I think that would be a massive, massive achievement that will unite the whole country as well. Absolutely. Um. When we look at your career, and I'm going to bring it back to your career as we wind down the interview, um, what are some of the things you would like to achieve before your, your career ends? Like, what, what is on that bucket list for you? Obviously, winning the league. Because even when I was playing back home, I never won a league. So mm -hmm. I would love to win, win, win a league title before, before, before I retire. Got you. And would you see yourself returning to Namibia when obviously your career is done in, 
in South Africa, which you still have many seasons there? Or do you think you'll end in South Africa? I or... think I have to obviously give back to 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 the boys back home. So I think yeah, I'll definitely be involved in, in football back home when I'm done playing football professionally. Yeah. And how does the Namibian League compare to the Premier Soccer League in South Africa? Namibian League is really not up to standard. If you can check, we don't have uh, stadiums. Uh, the league is not professional. Also, the salary-wise, I think we, we need to do something really big to, to get our, our league professional. And 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 Rian, I mean, like we we've obviously seen you linked to a lot of teams in South Africa. If the opportunity came to go to maybe one of the big teams in North Africa or one of the big teams in um in East Africa, would you be open to leaving South Africa, or are you or are you just very happy to to pursue your career in Southern Africa? Obviously, I'm enjoying my time here in South Africa. But if an opportunity comes. A better opportunity comes. Uh, definitely, I'm looking. I'll, I'm open to to trying my luck out. My luck out. Rian, it's been a pleasure having you on. Uh, once again, congratulations on a great season personally for you, for both club and country. It was a pleasure watching you shine on the Afcon stage, um, and uh, I wish you all the best for the remaining games this season with Amazulu. May your top eight dreams come true.